Welcome back, you guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. If you've been a longtime subscriber, it's good to see you again. If you're new to Glassblowing, hit that subscribe button and notifications so you can see when we put up more content. Absolutely, we've been making all kinds of different stuff lately, branching out from the usual pipes. So this week, uh, we're back on it though with a pretty sweet little slide. Yep, absolutely. That Raticello over uh, Wigwag, I love that tech. Anyway, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for signing up for the online school. Since I lowered the price to only $9 per month, a lot of people have come in and it's been so cool to see people making all the demos, posting them in the Facebook group, and just really building a community and having people that we can blow glass with and learn together. So I wanted to thank you guys, all who signed up and invite anyone else to join. It's only $9 per month, there's a link right down there. And the Facebook group, you know, totally free. If you, if you don't have that, yeah. just hop in. Everybody's been posting up their demos, tons of other discussion, yeah. just about studio setups. You know, what are your guys' favorite ways to do this, that? So it's yeah, been really good. They put up a piece and people like it, it's really, a lot of glass blowing, a lot of community about glass blowing. So we're really happy with the growth of the group. And yeah, we'd love to see you in there. Kevin's a moderator there, he'll say hello. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then we got a bunch of workshops coming up soon. Got some here in December and then more after the new year. All online workshops, pretty sweet. Yeah, that's part of the online school. Um, go check it out, guys. It's really, really amazing to spend the day with an artist that you respect, learning their techniques and kind of getting some feedback from them on the direction you'd like to go. So yeah, please join us for those workshops as well. Absolutely, I'd love to see you there. We wanted to thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts, as always, for supporting the show. They uh, have all kinds of tubing and they're getting some new products in all the time. You know, new, new tools, new yep. kinds of tubing, all kinds of stuff. Yep, we, I've been talking closely with Joe and giving him a couple of uh, names of of tool makers and supply makers that I like. So I know he's gonna be starting to carry those. If you guys are trying to blow glass or need some tools, make sure you hit them up and mention that you saw it in a video and you guys will get a little discount. Absolutely, and if you're close by, you can always stop in, ask for some advice, pick that. up your order. I would, I would truly love to <laughs> go there. Kevin and I would like to plan a trip and show you guys what it's like, but I'm sure it's just a, a, a heaven of like glass blowing supplies. You could go in there and just be like, spend so much money sure. <laughs> yeah so much money and all day <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks again to mountain glass arts for sponsoring as always cool well let's get in the studio let's make this slide and we'll see you guys in a bit let's get to it all right all right so you're hopping on the torch here you've got a little piece of uh line tubing you made just pulled down into a, a thin section there in your classic blue colorway yeah i'm just gonna make a wig wag so twisting one side of that creating a little bit of a kick and then letting that cool and using my small flame and just heating up the next section, turning the other way. And you're just making a pretty small wigwag here. You know, you're trying, you want to keep this pretty small since uh, you're using a relatively small section of reticello as well. Aim in for a 10 millimeter bowl piece here. You know, you don't want to be making too many kicks there. You'll just end up wasting them, pulling off of the final wigwag. Totally, totally. Wigwags, as you guys know, is one of my favorite things to do. And there's a lot of different ways, you know, patterns and, and amount of kick that you do really changes the, the final product quite a bit. So this is just kind of one standard way that I like to do it. It's just like very even all the way across. And we totally have more in-depth videos on wigwags if you want to see that full process, you know. We definitely blew through it a little bit today, but go check that out for the, uh, the full process below. I'm gonna just cut this in half. Um, that way I can have two wigwags out of the tubing that I prepped up and then I'll be able to make those connect and create a Tetris. Right, so you're just gonna use your diamond shears there to split them in half and- Uh-oh. Oh, oh, that's being, it's being stubborn. And this one was being really stubborn. Yeah. You really had to get in there at the diamond shears and get uh, them, oh, popped ha -ha. it way <laughs> off, just man. Just launched. Sloppy. Uh, you know, so, you know, to prevent that, maybe heat it more and more condensation with the with the rollers maybe right i mean it's a hard seal right because it's the really small seal connected to the end of of that wigwag so right you're probably gonna lose the punty regardless yeah but you could you know yeah you could get, get through the wall a little more yeah with the, i would say that that's, that's definitely true you got to be ready in glass i mean you know not everything goes smoothly um all the time in fact a lot of times it doesn't, so you just kind of go with the flow. Right, it's all about adapting. So you're just getting in there with your Lynx flame, close that wig bag up, and you're gonna just condense this back into a nice little ball. 
tiny little wigwag balls. And then that's the nice thing about these little ones, like boom, that ball is nice and round pretty uh, pretty quickly there. Yeah, really fast. Re I didn't even attach a punny to condense it, right? And like normally I attach a mm -hmm. punny and condense it in little sections. This one was just like, no. Boom, just heat it all up, heat it up blow it out. Go. And now here you're thinking about where to put your hole for your Tetris. And you end up, you, you do, you know, you end up switching it, but uh, you go in here with the, the mini torch, popping a hole there to, to attach a blow tube. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it it really doesn't matter because um, uh, when, once you connect them, you're, you're going to be making a hole on either side anyway. Right, right. It's just deciding which way the... Uh, the colors are go together. Correct. Yeah. yeah, which way you put it together. Got your little Sofietta there. Puff that back out since you have it on a punty there. I'm going to heat it up and get ready to attach it to a blow tube and then attach it and blow it out again. Make it nice and round. Give it a little puff there. Pop that punty off. Boom. And now you puff that guy back out nice and round and you'll hook your uh, punty back up and opposite your blow tube there. Yeah, just going to do a flame cut here and open that up and that'll set me up to attach this to another wigwag color to color the blue blue pattern in the center right the the wigwags meeting in the center kind of fading to clear towards yeah. the towards the outside that was tanner he's a student that came to work with me for a couple weeks from kentucky very cool yeah he's, he's doing great oh yeah he's making mini tubes today oh nice yeah. progressing quick so i got that guy ready for a seal and pop that in the kiln all right and now we're going to condense this other part of the wigwag get that all prepped up and connect them together same deal here just using your lynx flame condense that back putting a nice amount of heat in there i remember the first wigwag that i saw and it was well the reversal i would even, i would call it um there was not so many kicks but a little bit of a spiral mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it was when I, I was at going to school at california college of arts and crafts in oakland california and uh, one of the students had a pipe. This was in 1996, and so pipes were pretty rare at the time. Oh, wow. Maybe seven, maybe 97. Um, pipes were pretty rare, and so to see one in general was rare. And then this one had a spiral kind of on it uh, where it, where the, the points were on the, the stem. So it was definitely mm -hmm, reversed. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was just outside was it, work. Was you it, know? I would say, was it just like uh, color lined onto clear or something? Or was it yeah, fume? Yeah, it was like color lined onto clear uh, with fume. Like fume. Oh, nice. Then probably caramel or Heady. something. Yeah. Heady, bro. And then switch. And I was like, oh, man, that's so Dude, cool. What? You could do that? Like, yeah. Had you already you know, become interested in glass at that point? Yeah, I was at the glass department. I was oh, studying okay, glass nice. at CCAC. Nice. And I'd been blowing um, glass for maybe like a year or something like not very long maybe even less the wigwags yeah. early i can see why you like them yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's probably 96 i would say and here you are making just a couple little tiny ones yeah much different now they look, yeah. they look a, a lot little, different a little different maybe a couple more colors to choose from so i'm gonna open it up and then get them both prepped up with the same even size opening and look to see where the points are and where the terminations are and line it up the way i'd like Right, you want you want to be pay close attention to the way the color patterns match up, you know. Yeah. Unless you're going for some crazy, you know, off kilter thing, totally an option. Putting heat into the connection there, puffing it out, same as you would do with two larger sections, just you know, yep. on a miniature scale. Yep, yep. Just putting some air in there, melting it in, removing the punny marks, and then stretching it out just a little bit because this is actually going to be the inner part of a sleeve, because um, you know today we're doing that radicello over these wig legs. Right, so you're going to pull that down just a little bit with the punty there. That helps you keep a nice, more even wall when you stretch it out yeah. versus a tapered shape. All right, blow that. Use on my Marver, my L Marver to kind of make those walls more square. And you'll take that punty off there. <clears throat> and you're going to pop this guy in the kiln once it cools down while you prep up your reticella. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it to see if it's going to fit on the inside or if I need to adjust um, the shape at all. This was a just kind of some prep work for a piece that didn't work out. So you had one section of the tubing there still large enough to use as the sleeve. Yeah, I'm just going to detach the end of that 
And then that's still even going to leave a section that I could use later on for a piece. Absolutely. Use it for, you know, even a little spoon or a section of a small neck on a smaller piece. Plenty of options. So for those of you guys that, that um, don't know a lot about this pattern, it's called Reticello. And it was developed in Venice, Italy, in Murano, Italy. Um, probably, I would say... 1600s, 1700s, something like that might be the first occurrences of Reticello. And, and if you guys know more about this, please put it in the comments. And it was developed in Murano, and now it's a, a technique used worldwide. Mm -hmm. And this is a bit more of a you know a modern pipe making Reticello with no air traps in it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you guys just Google Reticello, you'll probably see some videos of some furnace glass blowers, and the way that they do this is similar, where they're they're making two cups and putting them inside of each other, but it's made with cane, and when they twist it, the cane in opposite directions, it creates little bubble traps. Since the the uh, color lines on the cane are a little bit raised. Correct. So you're just condensing this guy back, closed him back up so you could puff it out nicely there. And now you open that hole back up. You want to make the walls a, a little bit thicker oh, and widen it out a little bit for you there. I'm just going to use one blade of the jacks to open that up. It's really important. I've been, I've been teaching Tanner this week and, you know, he's got the jacks on the table and the reamer and, you know, these different kind of flaring tools. And one thing that I've noticed is that People, you, you want to use the jacks for only when you're turning the glass. If you want to only turn the tool, use the reamer. It's like, I know it's a basic tip, but for those of you guys just starting off, make sure that you're you're not using the jacks in a way that you're going to misshape your piece. Totally. And especially, you know, if you're like, oh man, I just got these jacks. I really want to use them for yeah. all my hole openings. It's yeah. like, oh, they may not be the tool for the job. Yep. So you, you can see that I just fit it in the reticello sleeve to see if it was the right size. It was the right size so now i'm just gonna flare this little lip open to have it catch on something after i insert it into the tube and this is very similar to the way you make the reticello itself yeah you just you know another inner sleeve sleeves and sleeves yeah you know there's a guy in the glass world who's famous for this his nickname is sleevey wonder <laughs> so you've got that flare perfect there you grab your diamond shears heat them up some so they don't shock the glass and then you pull your punty off. Yeah, and just make sure that's melted in. You don't, it doesn't need to be um, perfectly round because I'm going to pull that little end off anyway. So now that you drop that in, fits very nicely. And you're just going to heat that up with your links and start to, to condense it back once you connect that top lip. Yeah, you can see it melting together. And then once it's melted together, I start evacuating the air. And there you go, just bringing them down closer together. And you can see... It's kind of pulling the air out slowly and you can use either a vacuum, a nebulizer, or you can uh, attach a blow tube to that. A lot of different ways. It's got to be kind of just a light, consistent flow. And there you go. Once you have the whole thing condensed back, you're going to take a blow tube and you'll punty up to the hole in the middle, which is now the inside since the bottom blow tube doesn't have air access anymore. Yeah. And then, then this is also super thick now too, right? Because I've got three total different tubes lined up now right three different layers of glass and with yeah. the reticello you can only pull it down so thin before you start to lose the the lines yeah the, the reticello is a it you lose the lines you got to be kind of careful with how you pull it down also it kind of blows out weird there's been multiple times where i've had <laughs> things that have been reticellos that just like do not blow out in, in a nice way especially when you try to get it thinner it's kind of the i feel like it's probably the inconsistent viscosity overall the over the whole surface right the the slightly more dense lines of white going through the clear i don't just know i move mean differently, I, maybe. I, maybe but like like the way i think about it is that those lines should create structure right if the if the 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 viscosity of the white lines mm. is is slower right if it's stiffer than the clear True. that should create some sort of structure yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't just, know you know, you, if it's more susceptible to slight variances in heat or yeah. something, right? If you guys have tried Reticello and had any success or failure blowing it out, let us know your thoughts on why that's happening. Totally. So now you just uh, flip your blow tube around now, and you're going to shape the other end there. Yep, going to attach the blow tube. And you can see I've blown that out partly. Brought that closer together. Well, the wall, you know, narrowed the wall thickness down. Totally. Made it, a, made it a little bit thinner, expanded that out, made it nice and round. And like you said, you pulled off that little section. Don't need to worry about it. Yeah. 
and now heating this end up to round it out. Just kind of create like a nice um, tapered shape bubble. Make sure I blow out the whole thing first and then I can go into my taper shape. Right, right. You'll be making this into that bowl piece. So using your Marvert and angle there to work that wall a little bit into that taper. And now I'm just going to apply a little bit more heat here. Make sure that that's all nice and even. You can see that the heat is completely all around. I'm letting it set up for a second, creating that shape that I want. A little bit of gravity assist there. Puff of air to make sure the walls are staying nice on the inside. And now you can open up a hole on the front. All right, so now I've blown it out basically to the shape that I want. And I'm going to attach my blow tube or switch it, switch it around again so that it'll set me up to attach the joint that I want. And you've been using this blow tube trick all day here where you flip it over with your jacks, create that stress line. Yeah. And then it's like uh, sabering a, a champagne bottle. It is. It is. It's probably a lot like that. Yep. I think it's, yeah. you know, it's create, just hitting that stress point with yeah. this piece of metal and poof, right into the bucket. Hmm, maybe we should practice that a little bit too. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a good Episode one. 20, end nice. of season. Nice. So now you can just pull that uh, pull that other blow tube off and you're going to open a hole so you're ready to attach a joint to this to make it into a bowl. Yeah, and I was thinking about like what kind of joint to attach on this piece and I, you know before we would have just attached a factory joint but I felt like we needed something else a little bit more special for this piece. You got to step it up a little bit, match the aesthetic and I mean, we were kind of talking about this, right? You see some heady, heady piece and it's just got a, a factory gong joint on it. And you're yeah. like, ah, oh, it is still heady. Don't get me wrong. Right. But it's just like a little, it's a little like, ah, oh, man. I think like the thing to pay attention to if you're starting out blowing glass is that like, like put as much detail as you can all the way through the piece and your audience, yourself, your family will appreciate that and see that little detail that you put in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I see a piece and it has, you know, a nice squared off joint or something like that, I'm like, ooh. You took the time on that one, like, very nice. So we decided to make the joint out of some more of that inner tubing, basically, and I'm just gonna spiral up some, just so that it can be some, some decoration on the joint there. Totally, totally. You could just use a little bit of this tubing straight, but the spiral on the joint is always a, a nice touch, and it's it's pretty quick, you know? It yeah. takes even, you know, this is pretty much real time right here. It took you, you know, 30 seconds to twist that up. Yeah, totally. So, I don't know if we've ever showed you guys how to make a male joint on this before, but I'm sure there's multiple ways. I'm sure a lot of people do it different ways, but this is the way that I figured out works. And if you guys know any other ways, let us know in the comments for sure. But basically, I'm going to heat up this piece real hot, put it in that female graphite mold, blow, and then it fills up the space. And you got to get it really, really hot so it gets all the way down into the corners in there and give it a pretty firm puff too to make it to make it puff out in there. Yeah. And then I'm even doing it again just to make sure that I can get it as close to that as possible and hold the pressure in there so that as it cools, it's it's not going to move in at all and it's like forced to be in that shape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you took it out there and you're kind of studying it, making sure it looks good. And I, you know, I think it passed uh, passed muster. Yeah, you know, it actually, you know, it ended up fitting pretty good at the end there. So you're using a Bunsen just to, uh, you know, slowly bring the temp down a little bit and you're going to bench cool this guy. So we had a second option just in case we needed it, you know, something uh -huh. like a joint, always good when you're going to be cold working it. But we went with this one. We went with this. I liked the design on this one a little bit better. So you've got a, a diamond bladed saw here, a, little, a wet saw, and you're cutting that guy off to get a nice clean bottom end on it there. Yep, so there's the opening, and then I will also cut off the top so that it's ready to attach. Same deal here, just moving really slowly, very light pressure, letting the blade do the work. And now you're going to take it to your polishing wheels and uh, clean it up so there's no sharp edges. Exactly, exactly. So this is called a Gemini wheel, and different each wheel has a different grit so the one on the far left is probably 80 and then 160 and then maybe 240 320 600 3000 mm -hmm. whatever however it goes and then you can bring uh glass to a very high polish that way and all sanded as well and you also want to polish the side that you're going to 
um, sealed to because mm -hmm. it's gonna it might catch bubbles if it's rough yeah absolutely absolutely and you could use other things to clean it off certain acids and things like that but you got to be careful with that kind of stuff totally and you know it's what you got on hand so the the wheel is all good to go i mean some of you guys might have some acid on hand but who knows yeah. <laughs> then you're just uh <laughs> you're just taking your blow tube there and you just sealed up to the bottom making sure it's nice and straight and now you can connect it up to the rest of the bowl yeah so in this in this one i'm going to actually leave that punny on sometimes i would take the punny off and hold it with the joint holder but because of the fancy joint i wanted to just have that punny attached to it there right you had a nice clean seal at the bottom you didn't yeah. have to worry about and that'll give you good stability for the rest of the piece also rather than having to leave it in the joint holder the rest of the time yeah and i would have actually had to cut a joint holder because um it's a short joint so I, I would have to cut a little bit off of a joint holder to make sure it's a solid fit because it would want to sit too far too far down in there yeah and i do that sometimes with the joint tools that hold the female joints mm -hmm. i cut off this part of it so you got your hole open in the top there and this will be the bowl hole for the piece you're gonna close it down just a little bit i know that one might be a, a little too large for everyday use yeah so we just want to make that a little bit smaller and then apply a bunch of heat here get that nice and even that little puff just helps round out that hole yeah and push up that wall that's a little bit you know and then rotating as you push to make sure it's a nice centered bowl there all right heat that up get out any of those lines that scuzz make sure it looks nice and clean make sure it nice and centered and then once that's all good to go you're just going to put some heat back into the rest of it you don't want to let it get too cool when you're out here working with it yeah definitely i mean this is there's a lot of color going on in this piece you don't want to crack and since you're going to be putting a piece onto the side there, a nice little horn handle, you want to have the piece preheated for that. Yeah, so I had made this ahead of time. Um, I've been trying to make a few of the things ahead of time for the classes now, so that way we can have a little bit more complex piece. So this time I encased an opal. There's definitely a few videos that we've done where we've encased opals. You can check those out. And then uh, just did some encalmos up along it. Totally. It was a matching colors with a little bit of a, a black accent there. Yep. Use your mini torch. Oh, no. Nope. Before the mini torch, put on those dark glasses because the mini torch is very bright. Yeah, especially when it connects like black. Like there's a, the last line where it connects is a black circle and that's really bright, especially. Some, some colors glow definitely brighter than others. Yeah. I like the opaques and the blues and things like that. The blacks glow, glow really bright. So now that you've got that all nicely sealed in there, you can give it a little bit of a bend to make it fit nicely with the rest of the piece. Just pull that down there and kind of tuck it in. You can do whatever you want with the horn, add on any sort of decoration that you want, but uh, I'd love to see you guys do something where you put a lot of effort and um, time into the detail of your piece. Totally, yeah. Tag that with uh, Revere Glass School on Instagram. Been seeing some awesome stuff lately. Yeah, totally. Or uh, check us out in the Facebook group. There's a project every week that we all do together now. It's been a lot of fun seeing what everyone's doing. Just a little bit of stress under the bottom there where you bent it in, just using the mini torch to work that out. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And then once again, put some heat back into it. Yeah, just making sure that it's all smooth now. And now just getting some heat on the whole thing before I put it back in the kiln. So I'm gonna heat up the whole thing just a little bit, let it sit out for a second, and then put it back in the kiln. And you're also gonna straighten the joint there. It was looking a little off axis, just using your nice long tungsten pick from PC Metal working there. Yeah, I love his tungsten picks and jacks. You guys should check out uh, a couple videos back. We did a, a little segment on them. BC Metal working on Instagram. If you need to get some jacks or tungsten things, he's the man. Very nice looking bowl there. Pop that in the kiln. And this is for one of you guys. Yeah, just comment on the video. Let us know what you think. And boom, there's a little surprise for you. It glows. Oh my gosh. Pretty sweet. So that's some uh, Illuminati. Uh, stringers in the clear section there yeah and i you know illuminati is a, an old color great color i love seeing it and i have a little bit left so i just wanted to share it with you guys today sprinkle dash in great handmade joint there works really nicely with the rest of the piece got that big old opal and that double layer works so cool very nice thanks for watching guys welcome back you guys thanks for joining us thanks for watching that demo i really really loved making this slide with the opal and the Raticello over the wigwag, super cool technique. I hope you guys learned a tip or a trick or something you could use in your own work. If it, if it brought you anything, please like and subscribe to the channel.
Absolutely. We appreciate you guys watching. Absolutely. That male joint technique was pretty cool too. First time I'd ever seen that in person. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, pretty we used sweet. to do the drop hits like that. Yeah, I don't know if I ever noticed. Yeah, I probably yeah. saw it, but never really uh, took cool. an eye on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got some questions for you here, Dustin. Mm. First up from Spectre Glass. With all the craziness in the world right now, how do you find inspiration? I find inspiration through things that bring me joy and happiness and calmness. Um, so for me, it's shape, color, um, things around me, my family, my nature around me. And I'd say if you're looking for inspiration, there's a lot of ways to cultivate that. There's tons of, of even books and videos and, and YouTube stuff specifically on cultivating creativity and um, inspiration. In fact, I know if you're a member of the online school, my dad and I sat down and we did some exercises to cultivate inspiration. But you guys should find it where you find happiness, where you find joy, where's your bliss? Where, where's the thing that excites you? That's what you should be finding and bringing that to glass or anything you do creatively. Nice. Up next here from Tom Pyle. Can you make a piece that is a combination of borosilicate and traditional soft glass? Well, yes and no. So there's <laughs> kind of three ways you could go about it. Um, one, you can make a shape and lay force, make a shape out of soda lime, soft glass, big shape, lay components inside of that piece or around that piece that are borosilicate. Um, that's, they're not, they're not glued, they're not attached, so, so that's a way, no problem there. The other way is you could chemically bond it, as we say in uh, the art world, which is a fancy way to say glue. <laughs> so you could take a Hextall glue um, or a UV glue and physically attach components that look like they're one because the glue kind of ends up being like super minimal or looks like glass so you can't see it. So that's one way. And then the other way is you could do like a bridge, what it's called. So you would have little components that are different coefficients of expansion that you put together. So borosilicate is a coefficient of expansion of 33, soft glass, furnace glass 96 to 104 typically. So you'd have different stages along the way of different coefficients of expansions to be able to do a hot seal between the two. So you'd have 33 and then maybe 39 and then 44, yeah. you know, working your way all the way up. Yeah, because in theory, the glass is going to move and it co you know expand and contract a little bit as it gets heated and cooled, but it should have enough play that a few of those points won't matter. And that, that's the case with color, right? All of the borosilicate color is not exactly 33. Even the clear glass is probably not exactly 33. Mm -hmm. And it's this, there's a range that fits together and works in the compatibility. Range. And that's why you sometimes end up with colors that don't really like to seal to each other. You yeah. know, they'll be too different in their seals. You might have one at 30 and one at 35 is too Ding! far off, you know? Totally. I totally. don't know the numbers exactly, but right. that's the Just theory. Just as an example. Anyway. Yeah. And Very cool. but one more thing about connecting the two glasses, if you're using a, um, a product for ingestion or internally, make sure that you're using the components that work for that. So, so that's why mm -hmm. all of the glass, all the, the high-end American glass, those, those never have any other kind of glass in it besides borosilicate. There's usually never rubber seals, things like that. It's all glass on glass because we're trying to minimize the intake of toxins and so just keep that in mind for different kinds of glasses and connecting. And then finally here, one question we get from a lot of different people is what's the best way to start out, you know, just starting out in glass blowing? Yeah, so it's a lot about your budget and time. Um, you, can, you can start off for a couple hundred dollars. You could put $10,000 up or more and get a pretty equipped studio. Um, but I was just thinking about this with Kevin, that you can start off making little molecules and tiny things like Dan Hoffman made in the workshop for a couple hundred bucks. You buy a Smith Torch, a mm -hmm. fiber blanket, you know, go outside and make some little balls and little pieces. So I think that the amount of money that you're initially going to spend will correlate to the size of the work and the complexity of the work that you can initially make. Right. So if you want to start making bigger stuff, you're going to need a kiln, you're going to need a bigger torch, you right. know, you're going to need larger tools, things like that. Yeah. And you know, then you're maybe cold working mm -hmm. or a big array of colors or, 
you know, silvers and golds and torch stands and jacks and, you know, it's endless, you guys. It's a lifelong pursuit and you should start off where you're comfortable, right? Start off right now, what's within your, your realm of possibility. Um, certainly join the online school, it's $9 a month. Study with me, you can come out to Berkeley or another glass blower and that'll help you along. So again, it's about money and time, but you can start off with very little time and very little money or you can throw a lot at it and you know. Right, grow into your tools in your shop. Yep. Very cool. If you guys have questions about setup, join the Facebook group, it's free. A lot of people at the beginning there, starting off, setting up studios, you know, talking to mm -hmm. each other. Be part of the community and we'd love to have you. Absolutely. Got to give away this piece from last week, Dustin, the collab you guys did. Nice, that was so fun working with Blake and seeing him again. I, and I, I love the dot stack and the, um, the vac stacked uh, mm -hmm. cane in the center. Came out great, the colors work so well together. Yeah. Anyway, there was a lot of great comments. We appreciate all the support we got from last video, but. It is going to James Radney. Thanks James, we appreciate you watching. Enjoy the piece. Thank you guys all for watching so much and we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Absolutely, we'll be giving away this uh, little uh, bowl here. So make sure you drop a question down below. We'd love to have some more to answer for you guys in the next episode. Give us questions and comments, for real. Absolutely. All right, bye guys. See ya.